So I just wanted to show you these images. Um, the first was me when I just got off anesthesia, so I'm still all swollen and bloated. Um, and yeah, these are just a few of my x-rays that I thought I would share with you guys. Um, my most recent x-rays in some different positions. So um, I hope you enjoy seeing me on a more intimate level. Okay, so part two. Um, my first night in the hospital uh, was rough, like I explained with the catheter. Um, but also because my roommate was snoring profusely. Um, so that was difficult to sleep through. And I also had nurses coming in every two hours at least to check my incisions and to um, do my blood pressure, take my pulse, and to get my temperature. Um, so it was hard to sleep, hard to concentrate. I think I got about a scattered four or so hours of sleep. Um, they were giving me a uh, painkiller directly through my IV, um, and that actually was leaving me with zero pain. I could not, I could not even feel where my injection site was. I was completely pain free. Um, I think I woke up for good around 5.30 the next morning, uh, and I had my nurse help me get up. I, re I was <laughs> feeling the urge to get the catheter out as quickly as possible, so my nurse told me that in order to do that, I'd have to get up and show her that I could walk um, at least to the next set of doors uh, so that she knew that I'd be able to get to the bathroom when the time came. So uh, she showed me how to get up the best way and uh, it was it was very painful but I eventually got there. Um, walking, getting upright actually felt really great um, because I had been so stiff already in that position that I really just needed something to move my joints around uh, to relieve some of that pressure. So. I made it to the doorway no problem, and she agreed to take the catheter out. Um, she, I believe at first she injected some stuff in there. I don't know if it was to dilate it or to numb it locally a little bit. And then she had me hold my breath, and she pulled it out. Um, and it hurt, but not as bad as when, um, you know, when my bladder was full and she uh, had it all flush out very quickly. So I was done with the catheter and that's all that mattered. Um, then not terribly long after I had the physical therapist and the occupational therapist come in and they tried to guide me, um, you know, the best ways to get in and out of bed, um, told me that they want me sitting and standing and walking and laying down all in rotation so that I'm not, you know, doing anything any one thing too much that I'm getting a good mix um, and especially sitting I needed to make sure that I wasn't sitting for more than 20 minutes because it is the most stressful position um, in the early days on your spine so um, the way to get out of bed uh, and I'm thinking about demonstrating it is um, to if you're laying flat on your back, which you can only be on your back or on your side um, for a while, nothing on your stomach, then you want to lift your knees up as high as you can and then turn your body as one unit. So hopefully holding on to something in front that you can pull your body along with your knees to the side um, and then try to work your legs down off the edge of the bed once your knees are over the side of the bed. Um, so that they're flat on the ground while pushing yourself up um, and that way you're not bending or twisting your torso which as part of BLT you're not allowed to do um, and that was pretty challenging um, for me it's because on that second day I was having really really terrible pain in my um, abdominal area like wrapping around the whole band and in my left hip area. Um, 
and that was when I bent my toes up or I tried lifting my leg a little bit. I needed to have people physically move my left leg for me because it was so weak and it was so painful. Um, but once I got up, I was doing absolutely fine. It was just getting that left leg to cooperate, which was physical torture. <laughs> um, and the physical therapist had me go all the way down one of the hallways, um, and it felt great with a walker. Um, and they had me do four stairs because I told them that it's three stairs to get into my house, and that was no problem either. Um, then going back down the hallway, I did not use a walker, um, and it was very liberating for me. Um, when I came back to the room, they helped me brush my teeth for the first time, which was probably necessary. Um, you know, not to lean over the sink or anything like that. Make sure you have a cup with you. Um, and then instead of laying back down, they had me sitting in a chair for the first time. So I was to sit in the chair for 20 minutes. Um, and to do that, I have to, I have to back straight up into the chair until I felt my legs hit the chair, then hold on to the armrests of the chair and lower myself, um, with my knees, no bending at the trunk, um, and to hold your abdominals really tight, and that's something that I found is very important in getting into all these positions, is to clench your abdominal muscles as tightly as you can to really pack in that, that muscle strength. Um, and sitting by the end of the 20 minutes really did hurt. I wanted to be laying down again. Um, unfortunately for me, the physical therapists had already left, um, and they hadn't shown me how to lay back down in bed, which I don't think they realized until the next day, and I told them that I needed help with that. Um, but they did, hadn't told me how to get back into bed. And I tried very unsuccessfully, um, and I was very frustrated and started crying, so I pressed my nurse call button, and I was just stuck standing on the side of my bed uh, for 10 minutes until the nurses came um, after I had to call a second time. Um, I don't think they understood that I was physically stuck and I couldn't move in a position that was very painful for me. Um, so I was able to sit down onto the bed, and then my little tiny poor nurse had to lift both of my legs simultaneously and flip me flip me onto the bed um, and that was that was really very very painful um, and undesirable uh, it was not the way that you know I would later be taught to get on the bed um, so that hurt <laughs> um, a few hours later that initial roommate left uh, so I had a good few hours of quiet. I thought I would get a whole night to myself. Uh, but later that night, a girl named Tiffany moved in. Um, but she was nice and she was young and very friendly. And she had a lot of visitors and phone calls. So I got to uh, meet people and uh, in her life, and that was nice. Uh, I forgot to mention that after the physical therapist, I actually had a woman come from the massage uh, program in the hospital, and she just did a very quick, free, gentle tissue massage of my neck and my shoulders, um, my arms, hands, legs, and feet, and it was very soft, and it was very quick, but it was serenely, supremely, um, soothing, and I told her that, you know, given the events of the physical therapy, my stress level was probably at a 10 when she first came in, and she left and it was at a 2, so it was really glorious. Um, I also, um, the day before, uh, really as soon as I was able, I was really awake, um, I started using this breathing apparatus, which I'm going to splice a video in at the end. Um, and I actually took the video on the third day post-op, and that's why I look really greasy and disgusting. Um, so you'll have to forgive that. But I wanted to demonstrate how that worked, uh, and that's to prevent any uh, pneumonia and some bad chest buildup. Uh, so it was a very important tool that I actually got to take home uh, as a nice little souvenir. 
Um, what else happened on day two? My, uh, in addition to my family being there, they were on and off all, all the days that I was at the hospital. My roommate and my friend came to visit me, um, and I got to show off for them, uh, walking and doing stairs, and they actually challenged me to do more stairs, which probably, uh, was a little overambitious for the second day, um, but it was nice to have friends around, um, I had a hard night that night again, too, um, but the nurse kept giving me the injectable painkillers, which seemed to be a thing that was really helping me a lot. Um, even though she warned me that I should really try to switch over to the Percocet since that would be what I was taking at home, but I told her really, sleep what was what was most important to me at that point, and I needed to sleep. Um, so throughout that first day, I still remained very constipated. Um, wasn't passing gas or anything, um, just building up and building up and building up the pressure in my abdomen, so it was really hard. Um, what else? That might be the main events of day two. Um, I didn't take a specific day two video, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> I'll have some pictures and stuff to splice into the next video, too, that you can enjoy. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. So I'm going to stop this one here and try to move on to day three and maybe squeeze in some day four if I can go quick enough. <laughs> Alrighty, see you in the next one. Hi. I just wanted to show you this little thing that I've been doing as often as I remember. <laughs> I'm supposed to do it ten times an hour while you're at the hospital. Um, and it's this little machine called the Inner Life, and I guess it's kind of like a nebulizer. Um, that you breathe out, and then you breathe in through this tube, and the goal is to keep this little indicator between these arrows and to get the strength of it up to this 1500 mark. Um, so I'm doing a demo. Breathe out. So you do that ten times, um, try to do it every hour, and that lowers your risk of pneumonia, um, keeping your chest as pure as possible. Um, and yesterday I did notice I had a little bit of a cough, um, and so I made sure to do this as often as I could um, when I'm not sleeping, obviously. But um, yeah, just wanted to show you that fun little update.